Okay, so we have a bunch done on our site now. We've got likes, comments. We're not going to get into the shares because uh, that would take a little bit too much time. We've got comments. Um, and we can like show more and expand them. Uh, we have user accounts. Uh, so everything up to now has been relatively complicated. But now we're going to get into something that is much more difficult uh, because we're going to be learning a new language called PHP. Uh, we're just going to be doing a little bit of it. But this is meant for people that so far have been able to follow along pretty well. So if you haven't been able to follow along and you're still pretty confused. This might be too advanced for you, but you can just copy it uh, or you can choose to skip this section because it is skippable on purpose. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a link preview. So let's say we create a new post that has youtube.com. Um, we want this to automatically detect that youtube.com is a website. And so it'll have a preview that has like youtube.com um, like the image of it and like a brief description provided by YouTube of what their site does. So you could also do it like if you type in like Wikipedia or any site like that, you'll notice these are very common on blogs and Facebook posts and stuff like that. Um, also, another thing that we can do is actually embed a YouTube video. So if you have like youtube.com slash and then like whatever the video is, it'll detect like, hey, that's a video. So we're just going to paste it right onto your website. So again, it's going to be a little bit more complicated, um, but that's okay. Just try and follow along. So we're going to look in paint here because I've made this uh, representation um, of a client and server interaction. So we've dealt with client server interaction already with Firebase, um, but we don't have control over Firebase's server because they run that code themselves. So an example of a client server interaction would be like, we're like, Hey, Firebase, uh, we need a list of posts. So then Firebase uses that message and says, okay, we're going to get a list of posts together for you. And then they send that list back to our client. We receive the list of posts and then we do stuff with the list of posts. Um, so what we're going to be doing is similar to this. Um, however, we're going to actually create our own server side code. And it's important to note the differences between client and server side code. So client code is JavaScript that actually executes and runs on your machine. So when you go on like facebook.com or youtube.com, there is code that runs in Google Chrome in your browser, in Internet Explorer, whatever browser you're using. But there's code that doesn't run and it runs on the server instead. And the reason why is because anything that is sent to the client can be hacked. Um, and it's relatively easy to do so in a lot of cases. So for example, um, if you were logging in on Facebook and then you have a list of 10 friends, you don't want all of their info because then somebody would be able to hack it and get like the username and password for all 10 of those people, right? So that code would only run on Facebook's servers so that Facebook has access to that code. No client will ever see somebody else's username and password. Of course, servers can be hacked, but it's much more difficult um, because if you go into client, if we load up this website, we can right click and click inspect and all this info uh, is here. So if you went onto a site like YouTube or Facebook or something like that, you can actually do this. Um, another example is you could have an input box, right? Um, and its type could equal password. And now if I type into it, it's going to be the dots. Now, if you see an input box like this, you can right click it, click inspect, change its type from password to text and you'll be able to see whatever text was typed in there, right? So there are a few client things that are very easily hacked, especially because you can literally just read through all of the HTML. So basically what you wanna take away from this is we have server-side code in order to prevent uh, clients from seeing uh, code that they shouldn't be able to see. Um, there are also other reasons for client and server-side code, and one of them is actually what we're going to be doing today. So. We are going to be creating these link previews, as I said. However, uh, the code library that I found in order to do it can't be used in JavaScript. It can only be used in a server-side language. So even though we're not really too concerned about security right now, um, because we are going to be the ones running our server and our client, and we're the only one that's going to see anything anyway, we actually have to use the server-side code. So we're going to be getting into that right now. 
So I'm going to go onto Google, and I've already found this stuff, but I'm going to try and walk you through it. I'm going to type in PHP link preview. And now the first thing that comes up is actually the library that we're going to want to use. And I literally found this by being like, oh, I need a link preview. And then I Googled that and I typed in like link preview JavaScript and I couldn't find one. So I found one PHP um, on a forum somewhere. So then I Googled PHP link preview and it took me right to here. So basically what this is, is somebody else has written code to do all of that for us. We just need to send them the URL for the website and they'll handle a bunch of stuff. Which again, as programmers, we like to take advantage of these things because there's no point rewriting stuff that you can get unless your only goal is to learn. Um, so we're going to walk through how to actually install this stuff right now. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this installation. So it wants you to download this file using wget, um, which we would run in the command line. However, wget is not something we have installed and it's not something that I want to go over. So instead, we're just going to do this. We're going to copy this link starting from HTTP. And then we're just going to paste it into our URL. And it's automatically going to download this composer.far file. So now you're going to want to move it into your www folder. So we're going to grab it. We're going to open our Visual Studio. And then we're just going to paste it right here. OK. So this is a whole bunch of stuff. We have no idea what any, any of it means. That's completely fine. So the next thing that we have to do now is install it. So we're going to go to our CMD. Um, and now you need to find that file. So we need to access our www folder. So actually, a good way to just go over a few things in here, if we type in dir, it'll show us all of our directories. Um, but we're just going to go dot dot slash to go to the previous directory. So now we're in our users folder. We're going to go dot dot slash to go to our C folder. And then there should be a WAMP64 folder here. So there is. So we're going to type in CD WAMP64. And then CD www. And that'll bring us right into our www folder. Now we can type in php composer dot far install. I believe this is going to give us an error. OK, so it's looking for a composer.json file in our www folder. So I'm just going to scroll up to here, and I'm going to grab it. Um, there should be a way to just auto copy. But I guess we can just do it like this. So then we're just going to create it ourselves. We're going to right click in here, new file, composer.json. For the record, I don't even know what any of this means. I just know that um, this is what they're telling me to do. So I'm just following basic instruction at this point. I'm going to retype this and see what happens. There'll probably be more errors. Oh, hey, it worked. So we're going to wait for all this stuff to install. Now, you might run into an issue where it says um, PHP not, or it doesn't recognize PHP as a command. PHP not recognized as a internal command. So to fix this, if you get that problem, uh, let's see. Yes, yeah, so we need to add our WAMP slash PHP to our path variable. However, this isn't WAMP, so I wonder if somebody else posted a comment. Oh, so for WAMP, the path is C colon backslash uh, WAMP64 slash bin slash PHP. Okay, so basically, if we look at our local disk, WAMP64, and we go to C uh, WAMP64 slash bin slash PHP, um, you'll see a bunch of these. You're going to pick the highest one, and then you're just going to hit the start key or the Windows key and type in environment variables, edit the system environment variables. Um, you're going to go to environment variables right here, and then you're going to find path, and you're going to click edit. And as you can see, I've already added it, so that's why it's fine for me. 
but you're basically going to copy this. So C colon backslash WAMP64 slash bin slash PHP slash PHP 7.3.1. Um, and that will fix that error. So if you guys have any problems with that, uh, this should solve it. Now, if we go back to our command prompt, it should be all done. So if we check out our Visual Studio again, you'll notice we have this vendor folder. And this is basically all of their libraries, so all of their code um, that they've provided with us. So we don't really need to look in here. We just need to access a little bit of the code they've provided. So don't worry about going through this and understanding what it means because you won't be able to do that. I won't be able to do that. Now, if we go back to the GitHub for this link preview, we scroll down, we're going to see usage. So we're just going to copy this in here and we're going to see what it does. So we're going to have a new file called get dash link dash preview dot PHP has to be dot PHP. Then we're going to paste this stuff in there. Um, now Visual Studio is supposed to recognize that this is PHP and I'm not sure why the language hasn't lit up yet. Oh, okay. So I guess we have to do that ourselves. So in order to start PHP, you have to put in this little uh, bracket and then a question mark and then PHP. And then at the very end of all your code, you do question mark and then the other end for the bracket. So now it's automatically detecting um, that this is PHP. And now if we use the code that they already typed in for us, and we just type in localhost slash uh, get link preview dot PHP. Okay, so we are going to get some errors. So we're going to have to figure out what's going on here. Class link preview slash link preview was not found on line seven. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so upon a bit of further inspection, we need to import this vendor slash autoload.php in order to access this code. So we're just going to type in include uh, vendor slash autoload.php. Then we'll save and we'll try it again and see if we get any more errors. Okay, so now it's saying it uh, there's an error on line 9 instead of line 7. Okay, so I figured out that they have a bit of a bug that's causing an error. So in order to fix this, we're going to delete vendor. Delete vendor. Um, we want to delete composer.lock. We want to delete, um, I don't know, keep composer.far. It's not letting me delete this. I'm going to reveal in File Explorer and then just click delete. Okay, so it does not want me to delete this folder. Okay, so it made me close Visual Studio in order to delete vendor. So delete vendor, um, keep composer.far. And then in composer.json, change it to just be this. So uh, in quotes, require, and then make sure everything is spelled perfectly and it all looks perfect or you're going to run into an issue. So once you only have the composer.json and the composer.far, we're going to redo the uh, PHP composer.far install. So then we'll give that a second to work. Okay, so now it's done. Let's try reloading our page. And we're going to notice we get another error. However, it's not the same error, so we fixed it. So um, this is typically how programming works, by the way. We just work through error upon error. Um, so I guess we'll target this next. I'm not actually sure what to do, so I'll have to figure it out. OK, so they have another bug. Um, and it's pretty crazy. I'm not even going to explain how I fixed it, just because it's too complicated. Um, but basically, Go to, oh man. Okay, you're gonna go to vendor. You're gonna open this uh, CASP 
and then open source and then open reader and then go to generalreader.php and then you're going to find on line 30 this request option cookies true right after the true you're just going to do comma oh it's not letting me type comma verify equals bracket space false um, this is not a good solution either because they made a bug so we're actually editing code that we shouldn't even need to touch but unfortunately there's nothing we can do about that so now if we go back to our local host slash get link preview.php um, we're gonna see that it worked so it reads our website spits out a description um, we can actually see what it spits out down here if we go back to our get link preview so the first thing that it does is it does this parser name which we don't need um, get URL get real URL and then get title so it's showing all the stuff so this is the URL this is the real URL which is like the same thing uh, then this is our title YouTube and then this is the description so we can actually get rid of a bunch of the stuff because we don't need it so we can get rid of the URL get rid of the parser name um, and then just have these four so that we also have get image now image isn't displaying and I'm not sure why um, maybe YouTube just doesn't want to send us an image but right now we can see that we have the URL we have the title now I guess PHP probably looks very unfamiliar to you um, but basically to declare a variable instead of typing in var we type in this dollar sign so these are variables and then echo just spits out something here so if we were to hit enter and type in echo and then add an HTML tag for BR and then add one under these we can actually see that all echo does is spit out HTML so we've got our URL our title our description and our image so if we copy this and type in youtube.com slash and then our URL oh whoops the URL already has slash so make sure you don't add two if we enter you'll see that it sent us back this YouTube image uh, but remember you do have to add the URL on top of it so now we have just gotten all of our information that we need for a link preview so our client we haven't created this code yet but basically it's going to ask our server which is our PHP code that's going to run on the server it's going to say hey we need um, link preview information for uh, youtube.com so then it will send that information to here uh, we've hard-coded in YouTube but we will change it to be whatever the client sends then this will say okay we're gonna get a link preview using code that we don't even have to worry about because this stuff handles it for us and then it's going to echo the URL the title the description and an image for us to use on the client side to actually make that link preview um, so we're gonna have to create an object that holds all this information and then we're going to echo that object so when you echo not only are you creating the HTML um, but you're also uh, sending out a message so we're not actually going to ever have this get link preview.php loaded as a URL we're going to have a JavaScript file that asks for get link preview.php and the echo is going to be what is sent back to the JavaScript file so this echo is basically this send info to client however it is also convenient that the echo also prints it out so that we can do testing like this